Hi guys, let's study a checkmate pattern called Lolly's Mate today. This pattern is named after Italian chess player Giambattista Lolly. The pattern usually happens when we have this position on board right now. We have a black king that is fianchettoed. The g7 bishop is already gone. And we have managed to push our pawn all the way to f6. And we still have our queen trying to checkmate the black king on g7. The opponent has moved the rook to g8 to guards again the g7 checkmate. You probably have seen this position many many times in the game. However, you might have stopped calculating here uh, about the attack because you think it's no longer possible because of the rook. But in this position, if you manage to bring another piece into the attack, either a rook or a knight, here is a rook, then this position is almost always deadly for the defender, it's really really dangerous. By the end of this video, I will show you all the ways that you can use to dismantle black's defense and checkmate the king. Here actually there is a checkmate for white. One plan might involve bringing the rook first to h3 and then creating a deadly battery of rook and the queen. However, here we don't have time because um, queen d1 results in checkmate straight away. So instead of bringing the rook first, we sacrifice the queen first. So queen takes h7, check. Only one legal move for black. Now rook h3, check. Not checkmate yet because uh, of queen h4. But now rook takes h4 and it's a checkmate. So this is one way we can kill black in this position. Sacrificing the queen and checkmating the king on the h file. Let's see another way in the next position. Here the opponent's pawn structure around the king is the same as before. King on the corner. Rook on g8, defending g7, our queen on h6, a fianchetto uh, position, a fianchetto structure, I should say, without the bishop, and our pawn on f6. However, here, the previous tactic won't work because the h-file is not open, and our rook wouldn't be able to get to the h-file. But still, here, there's a checkmate. Rook c8. Now this rook is threatened, and... If the rook on g8 takes our rook, then it's a checkmate. If it doesn't, then we take the rook, and then it's a checkmate anyway. Here in this position, it is important to calculate first if there's an exception. The exception usually come if this queen right here can check our king, and fork the king and the rook, and then take the rook here. But in this position, as you can see, um, the opponent's queen is unable to check our king, so this is uh, this is a win, a definite win for white, no matter what black does. Okay, another position. I want to especially show you this position because it's very instructive on how to bring the rook into the attack if the rook is not that much involved yet. If you remember from the first position, the rook was already on the position to go to the h file, but here our rook is still on the back rank. Is on f1. You might think that the best way here is queen h6, but if you move queen h6 carelessly, then rook g8, and now you think that rook f4 is fine, bring the uh, rook into the attack. But here, computer evaluation already show black is winning actually, slightly winning, because there's a very, very good defensive move, which is g5. And now the h file is not available anymore for the rook, and the queen is also kind of in a weird position, a bit cut off from the rest of the board. For example, if you think you can go to a rook g4, um, threatening this pawn, then again, black has a good defensive uh, move here, which is rook g6. And yeah, black is, is perfectly fine. Um, black is winning, according to uh, computer analysis here, actually. So that doesn't work. Instead, going back to the original position, the right move is to go to rook f4 first order of moves very important in chess and especially in this position and now if black goes rook g8 then we have rook h4 and black's position is crumbling here we are ready to open the h file sacrificing the rook and uh, using the queen to checkmate the black king uh, similar to the pattern that we see in the first uh, position so uh, the only defense for black here is actually to go g7 which is to sacrifice the rook but yeah, this is totally losing, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't analyze this further. So rook g8 doesn't work. Uh, another try that black can do here is actually uh, queen c2. 
threatening the rook. And now white has to move carefully here. There is a forced checkmate in this position, but if white is passive, for example, white just move uh, the rook to uh, rook f1, then this position is drawn again because black will go to queen d2. Now guarding this diagonal, if the rook moves, then the queen can be taken and there is no more checkmate. If h6 now, queen h6 now, then uh, rook g8. And again, it's a drawn position according to computer analysis at this point. So white has to be active previously. Here, instead of moving the rook, we go for the juggler, we go for the attack, queen h6. We let black takes the rook. If now queen takes b1 check, simply king h2. And as you can see, black runs out of check. Now there's a threat of checkmate in one. So black's only option is to guard with rook g8. But we've seen this pattern before, right? You know how to finish your opponent here, which is uh, sacrifice the queen. Queen takes h7 check. King takes h7, only move. And rook h4, checkmate. So yeah, again, it's very important when your rook is not already in a position to attack. Uh, let's go back to the previous position. Remember here, don't go to queen h6 first because then there's this defense. And keep in mind of this defense as well when you're defending. Um, yeah, A position that might seem hopeless if your opponent plays wrongly can actually be a draw or even winning. Instead, when attacking, bring the rook first and then queen h6 if necessary. Okay guys, I've shown you how to checkmate the black king with the help of a rook. Now let's see the position where we will checkmate the black king with the help of a knight instead. Here white is to move and to win. We start the attack by going to queen h6, which is a forcing move because it threatened mate in one, as usual in lollips mate. So black should defend with uh, rook g8. But now we go to uh, knight f3. The threat is obvious here. We want to jump to a uh, knight g5, and then this pawn is weak. Black will try to stay alive by going to queen h5, offering exchange of queen. Now, of course, if queen takes h5, then g takes h5, and uh, yeah, there is no more attack, right? Instead, here the right move is knight g5 anyway, because it's not just this pawn that is weak; this pawn is also weak. So now, if queen takes h6. Then knight takes f7 checkmate. So in the previous position, black's only move here to stay alive is to take the knight. But then yeah, we're uh, we're up uh, an exchange, a knight for a queen, and should win easily. So that's another way to checkmate the black king in fianchetto position. This position, uh, this square I should say, g5 square. If you can't put your knight there, it's very, very dangerous because then the h7 and the f7 is very weak. So to summarize everything that we've seen, first we have a rook, um, and then we can sacrifice the queen and checkmate the black king on the h file. That's one way. The second, In the second position, we bring our rook to the last rank, basically luring the black rook away, and then we can checkmate the black king on g7. And now this is the third way, bringing the knight to g5 and then attacking h7 and f7. Now let's bring all these attacking patterns together in the final position we're going to look at. Okay guys, let's practice in this final position. Before we said that there are three ways um, a rook, either a rook or a knight can help the queen to checkmate the black king. Here we, I, I can see two ways out of the three, right? Which is uh, first we can take f7. Unfortunately, it's guarded by the queen. Or we can go uh, with the rook uh, to the eighth rank, trying to lure this rook. But unfortunately, this is also guarded by the queen. So how would you, how would you win in this position? Please feel free to pause the video first if you'd like to think. And then we'll solve it together. Here the right move is an amazing sacrifice move. Rook b8 anyway. Now if queen takes b8, then the queen is not guarding f7 anymore. So knight takes f7 and it's a checkmate. If black takes with the rook instead, then queen g7 checkmate. And if black doesn't do anything, let's say black do some silly move such as uh, a4, well then rook takes g8 and then queen g7 checkmate. 
In fact, there's actually a more beautiful um, checkmate in this position when black doesn't do anything and do silly move like a4, which is queen g7. It's shorter and more beautiful. Now the rook cannot take because it's a discover check. So it doesn't matter really what black does in this position. It's always checkmate in one. White wins. Okay, guys, um, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope that it's helpful next time you're attacking your opponent in a similar position. Also, it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribe to my channel and like this video. It basically gives me feedback that um, you know my content is indeed useful to people. Also, do check out my other Checkmate Pattern video in my Checkmate Pattern playlist. Thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys in the next video.